Bob had been trilling up and down music scales all morning, while Mouse, Rodent Scholar, ran up and down the piano keys. La, 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 What are you doing? asked Custard. Laying the foundations for a garden opera house that will become famous for its patented flying roof. Oh, yeah, said Custard. Go on, then. Give us a rendering, a sneak preview. <laughs> Firstly, said Rhubarb in a C-sharp major kind of way, I detect a certain cynicism. And secondly, I am not an opera singer, and neither Mouse, a concert pianist, is. Well, I could have told you that, said Custard, and left. Never mind, said Mouse. I think it's great. Jolly good. All we need now is a diva to sing my opera, said Rhubarb in an operatic kind of way and swept off to find one. Ah, Poodle Princess, are you up to being a diva for the evening? A diva, darling, purred Poodle Princess, while Rhubarb carried on in rich Covent Garden tones, and Poodle Princess strangled a musical scale of C to within an inch of F sharp. <laughs> I'll call you, cringed Rhubarb, as Moggy Malone came strolling along, singing sweet nothings and gathering snapdragons. Moggy Malone, beamed Rhubarb, how would you like to make a name for yourself on the boards? <laughs> Opera singer, he whispered. On the stage, me. But be voice, I'm out of practice for opera, she warbled. In a memento, Rhubarb was on the bone phone, explaining to Mouse he'd found a diva, well, a singer of sorts. Mouse said not to worry. It was a rock opera anyway. And, he added, if she's any good, she's sure to get her arias into gear before the curtain goes up. After an announcement from Rhubarb, a good crowd began to gather on the opera garden lawn. I oh, hear there's to be a flying opera house roof built to fend off any storm, musical or otherwise, said Rookie. It's unthinkable, said Mrs. Hedgehog. That was the Titanic, muttered Mole. And being Welsh and knowing about melody and stuff, in a minor way, of course, he added that he was worried. But uh, didn't you once have an automatic music tuning machine, Mole? I did. I'll dig it up, said Mole. The first stars appeared on the warm summer's night sky, and the outdoor flying opera house roof was on its way. When the opera started, Moggy Malone did her best. It was called Dogs. The crowd murmured and shuffled, some tittered. Where's Moe's music tuning machine? Mouse demanded and Rhubarb snapped in a picture of first night kind of way that it was red. Instantly, Moggy's voice perked up, as did the good crowd. Her rusty notes radiated into the warm night air, and just as she reached her zenith, a new note was heard, rumbling above Rhubarb's opera garden. Billed as the flying opera house roof, it sidled into position and anchored over the evening's event. With the new roof, Moe's music tuning machine in place, Moggy Malone's voice began to shower the good crowd. Hurrah! Bravo! Encore! The good crowd wanted more. So far, so good, when Rhubarb, as the flying opera house roof began to groan, hiss, and snort. Oh, what on earth was that? He gasped. Opera singers can shatter all sorts of stuff, you know, boy. Glass, rubber, wood. I reckon she shattered the new flying opera house roof and my music tuner, said Mo. Turn that music tuning machine off, growled Rhubarb. Can't, said Mouse. Well, get her off, hissed Rhubarb in a loud stage whisper kind of way. The good crowd love her and she loves them. And so with that, Moggy Malone belted out her song as the flying opera house roof ripped itself to shreds in a storm of rock operatic gusto then floated gently down and covered everything. Good crowd, the all. 
As the muffled tones of dogs continued, several cool cats arrived and sat on the fence. Then it happened. The first scrawny looking cat started it, then another and another until the whole of the opera garden was infested with hundreds of scraggy cats screeching along with the muted tones of Poodle Princess, Rock Diva. Custard, will you please ask these friends of yours to leave? demanded Rhubarb as he dragged Moggy Malone out from under the tattered flying opera house roof. Should have called me, darling, crooned Poodle Princess. Oh, please! begged Rhubarb as he pleaded with the dishevelled Moggy Malone to stop. On with the show! shouted Custard. It's the first time we've heard dogs. My friends love it. They have a feeling for it. Music with feline. Get it, darling? And Rhubarb gave up and joined the crowd on the fence. And they sang to the moon and turned milk sour. It was a high old summer morning. The branches in the old conker tree were filling in quite early as the birds jostled for the best tweet. Moggy Malone was in tune with music but wasn't as she stepped into an aerobic session. On the other hand, Poodle Princess performed mystical movements with an oriental flavour. It was a yurt, said Moggy Malone. No, darling, said Poodle Princess. <laughs> Bower, arbor, gazebo even. It was a yurt, said Moggy, and turned her music up. Yes, Rhubarb heard himself say out loud. What are you looking at? Howled Custard. I have an idea for a new game, a sport even you could join in, Rhubarb shrugged. What? Me? You wouldn't get me involved in no sport, <laughs> said Custard with a yawn. But you're already involved. You've already looked, said Rhubarb triumphantly, and explained how he'd seen Custard lying on the fence, exercising while looking. Like this. Exercise? Looking? I wasn't doing no looking, wailed oh. Custard, as Rhubarb skipped off to finalise his new looking sport. Gentle physical movement for those watching, and action for those playing. <laughs> I am on to a winner. Barked Rhubarb. I can't wait, muttered Custard, and went back to listening to Poodle Princess and Moggy Malone. Mouse! Oh, there you are. What, what? are you doing up there? <laughs> inquired Rhubarb. Surveillance. Surveying you, surveying Custard, surveying Moggy Malone and Poodle Princess working out and meditating, <laughs> said Mouse. <laughs> Surveillance, eh? Rhubarb thought blankly. So that's looking listening and now surveillance. I'll have to call my new sport something really different. What? Asked Mouse. And Rhubarb said, pay attention. And so that, my dear rodent scholar, is how I see it. Got it? Yes! A brand new sport, said Mouse with great enthusiasm. So, you like it then, said Rhubarb. Yes, said Mouse. Up you go, then. Let's get this new sport up and running, so to say, chuckled Rhubarb. And the screen lit up. As Rhubarb stopped pacing the lawn in a measuring kind of way, he announced the name of his new sport, Wibbling, and then sliced the air with an imaginary ricochet, his new, specially designed bat. Wibbling! The great new sport for players and spectators. All welcome, he heralded and swaggered across the lawn as the birds swelled on a great wave. Wibbling? What kind of game is that? Custard wailed from the fence. Wibbling, the great new looking sport. My sport, my slogan, shouted Rhubarb, and Moggy Malone and Poodle Princess both looked in unison. Just in time for the new sport to begin, Post Dog's weasels finished building the wibbling wall fitted the large red wibble wheel and adjusted the wibble launcher in the centre of the lawn. Moggy Malone was poised on one side of the lawn while Poodle Princess was ready on the other. Mouse was perched on a tall stool at the centre of things and was miked up. Rhubarb stood waiting with his hands behind his back next to the large red wibble wheel. 
Quiet, please, called Mouse, and the crowd hushed, and the pressure was on. Green ball one to Poodle Princess, Mouse squeaked quietly. Rhubarb turned the wheel. A rumble rumbled from under the lawn, and a large iron ball was fired towards Poodle Princess. <laughs> she thumped the ball with her ricochet and returned it. Moggy Malone slammed it back, and the thunder of the drumming began. The birds had never seen anything like it, and they were involved in the game. The ball smashed into the brick wall. Wibble to Poodle Princess, Mouse called, and the crowd cheered while Moggy Malone drummed her ricochet nervously. Quiet, please said Mouse. Blue ball two to Moggy Malone. The machinery groaned and creaked under the weight of blue ball two. The ball began its flight towards Moggy Malone. Uh. And back to Poodle Princess. Uh. 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 God blimey! The handle on her bat snapped in half! Rookie blurted. Wibble, Moggy Malone, called Mouse. And as the dark clouds gathered over the lawn, Red Ball 3, the heaviest in international wibbling, was requested, and Rhubarb had to be helped by several weasels. Quiet, please, called Mouse. Red Ball was away. The crowd stood. Gazebo! Uh. Uh. Urba! Yurt! 400 miles an hour, announced Mouse, and the birds looked this way and that. Fault, shouted Rhubarb. Fault! Fault, he barked as the wibbling crash went to the circle. Christmas Day at last, and Rhubarb opened his eyes and gave a little shiver. Not because he was cold, he was excited. And then he noticed. The light's not quite right, he thought to himself. Then he knew it hadn't snowed. Oh dear, he sighed out loud as he looked over at his shiny new red toboggan, then turned on his wireless. And so, your Christmas Day weather will be warm and sunny with not the slightest chance of snow. Here is some sunny music. Out in the garden, Poodle Princess and Moggy Malone were making plans. The weather was so balmy, they decided to invite everyone to a Christmas feast under the old conquer tree and have a pantomime. The Prince and the Snow Witch. Moggy was belting out their snow business like snow business while Poodle Princess was roaring, oh yes there is, and oh no there isn't, at the top of her voice. I've got a pantomime horse in my shed, I'll get it, Rhubarb shouted, and set off down the garden, feeling happier already. Oh, and you who, Rhubarb, we'll need snow for the show, Moggy called after him. <laughs> Halfway to the shed, he bumped into Custard, who was standing on two brand new skis and laughing hysterically. <laughs> Christmas present? Shorter Rhubarb. It hasn't snowed, you know, Custard. You can't go skiing. Ha 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 ha! Oh no! Isn't it great? <laughs> said Custard, and laughed so much he fell over. <laughs> As Rhubarb pulled and dragged the pantomime horse out of the shed, he remembered what a handful it was, so he decided to wear the front half and carry the rest of it. Hot and bothered and dreaming of Christmas's past, Rhubarb stopped for a breather in the middle of the lawn when suddenly he heard Weathercock squeak on his stick as he turned tail towards the cooler north wind. Oi! How many times do I have to remind you that it's supposed to snow on Christmas Day? Rhubarb bellowed up at Weathercock. Do I have to keep telling you till I'm hoarse? He barked before dragging his behind off up to the old conquer tree. 
News of the pantomime caused more than just a bit of a buzz around the garden. Especially when Post Dog nailed up the sign, the prince and the snow witch. It was to star Moggy Malone as Sing Alonger, Queen of Panther, and Poodle Princess as Prince Icing, Principal Boy. Custard had been told not to be so lazy and was roped in as the ugly cat. As Rhubarb finally dragged himself up to the old conquer tree, rehearsals were well underway, and Poodle Princess looked magnificent in her costume. I say, I say, I say, oh dear, is sing along her. If only Rhubarb was here, darling, he'd know what to do. Where can he be? She cried. He went for the horse, Bungle Custard, the ugly cat. Mm -hmm. My panto for a horse. Uh, a horse for my panto, darling, the prince added, and sing along her prompted the ugly cat with her spear. <coughs> oh, yes, I, 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 yeah, yeah, I got uh, It looks like snow. Custard's words were delivered one at a time, and he was booed off sharpish by some early rebels. It looks like snow. Rumor! Sing along a bellowed from the stage, up to her proscenium arch in decibels. Oh, yes, uh, the snow. I forgot, said Rhubarb. And if it's gonna snow, I gotta go, he chortled, and as the curtain dropped, he was gone. In the shed, Rhubarb picked up his bone phone. Mouse? Why is my computer in pieces? You were away? In Silicon Valley? And I need to make snow? Book? What book? Oh, yeah, found it. And a Merry Christmas to you. Sawing, hammering and making noises followed the phone call. And eventually the shed door flew open and Rhubarb dragged his camouflaged wheeled contraption up to the old conquer tree. Poor Rhubarb. You've missed the feast, darling, said the princess. <laughs> well, as long as he's ready with the snow, eh? Nodded Custard, as Weasel's band struck up a prelude to the pantomime as the curtain rose. Good evening, everybody. I am Sing Alonger. Welcome to our little presentation. The Prince and the Snow Witch. Scene one. I say, I say, I say. Oh, dearest Sing Alonger, if only Rhubarb were here. Where can he be? Prince I say spoke clear and loud. He went for the horse, shouted the ugly cat. Oh no, he didn't, shouted the audience. Oh yes, he did, ball sing alonger. I say it looks like it will snow, hammered the ugly cat. Oh no, it doesn't, shouted the audience. Oh yes, it had better, thundered sing alonger and gave Rhubarb a piercing look. Oh, it does look like snow, shouted Rhubarb. He yanked the string and his snow machine went off with a bang and a flurry of pantomime snow covered the stage. Merry Christmas, everyone, squeaked a tiny voice. Mouse, grinned Rhubarb, you're back. And it really is snowing now. Rumble Custard. New snowflake software, squeaked Mouse, and looked over at the shed. But nobody heard him. <laughs> Rhubarb was walking in his garden on a day that could only be described as perfect flying weather, an aviator's dream. Big jets scribbled new vapour trails all over a freshly squeegeed sky. He felt the wind in his fur. Ah! Oh, sorry. Oh, Rhubarb. You're so wonderfully clumsy when you're busy writing a play, darling, cooed Poodle Princess. He was still looking up. You know, Poodles, Rhubarb began. Oh, Rhubarb, I know what you're going to say, darling. Your new play is for me, she flooded, but Rhubarb had other things on his mind. Sitting in front of his computer in a flight of fancy, Rhubarb marveled over the pictures of his magnificent model airplane. His love of flying all started with a spike, two strap-on wings, and a garden swing. A long time ago. 
Waking from his daydream, Rhubarb's think waves began to flow once more. Then he turned to an equally important design job, the trophy. When Custard arrived, have you ever made a model aeroplane? Rhubarb asked, knowing the answer. What? muttered Custard. I'm planning a model aeroplane show. Aerobatics, loop the loop, that sort of stuff. Interested? Uh... There'd be a prize, Rhubarb added. What, you mean money? No, said Rhubarb. A beautiful trophy, which will really be a scrumptious golden sponge cake. I say, an air show. Count me in, squeaked Mouse with great enthusiasm. Custard, can I put you down as a yes? Rhubarb queried. Uh, what, aero... bats and things, you say? Aerobatics, model aeroplanes, remote controlled. You won't have to do anything, said Rhubarb. And with that, Custard scuttled off and said he'd think about it. Now for Moggy Malone and Poodle Princess, said Rhubarb, and picked up his bone fur. Poodles are... No, no, you won't have to race an aeroplane, explained Rhubarb. No, Moggy will not have to drive an aeroplane. I just wanted to know if you two would present the trophy to the winner of my air show, said Rhubarb. And with that, Poodle Princess said she'd ask Moggy. Finally, said Rhubarb. They've agreed to present the trophy, he sighed. Ugh, after all that waiting, whispered Mouse to himself. As Rhubarb's alarm clock passed four o'clock, the model planes and their excited owners lined up at the end of the old strip of carpet that Rhubarb had put out as a runway. The atmosphere buzzed with aeroplane chatter like, George, Roger, over out. Well done, said Rhubarb in a high altitude kind of way, as Rabbit's floppy looking aircraft volunteered into place. Ah, oh, Mo, love the headlight. Wizard, what? I say, rookie. Red. Ah, a proper kite, what? Charlie, good luck. <laughs> Ciao. Meanwhile, Custard was on the other side of the fence, doing a deal with some bother birds. He didn't know their names, only that their leader was called Feather. OK, you know exactly what to do, Custard whispered, as Feather climbed into his flying boots and zipped up his sinister flying jacket. Yeah, snorted Feather, who now resembled a foul-looking black aeroplane. And with that, Custard pulled back a loose plank in the fence, and the evil Feather hopped through. Oi! Feather! No hopping! Remember, you are an aeroplane, Custard whispered hoarsely, and Feather lined up with the other model planes. Ahem! Ahem, Rhubarb. Welcome to the Model Aeroplane Show. Points will be awarded for graceful flying, he announced, and the race got off with a bang. Everything OK? smiled Rhubarb. Poodle Princess and Moggy Malone nodded a yes. Neither wanted to tell Rhubarb that they'd seen an aeroplane running. Finally, with the air show over and all planes safely on the ground, Rhubarb addressed the afternoon crowd and those magnificent model makers with their splendid flying machines. I have great delight to announce Custard as winner of the... Excuse me, said Rabbit. Custard's black aeroplane is eating the trophy. You there! You're not a bird. You're not supposed to be a plane. That's cheating, you sticker! shouted Rhubarb and presented Rabbit with what was left of the delicious trophy. 
And you, forget flying, you're grounded, he went on. That's where you are, you rot. And the birds cheered and flew around in circles. And everyone... <laughs> Whiz. The home of ABCs, 1s, 3s, and all your favourite kids' TV characters. Now let's find kids' TV. Or I can press this microphone. Whiz. That's how easy it is.